in a society focused on 21st century sorts of interactions in the workplace. The workplace is more collaborative, it's more problem solving based. Um, it's no longer necessary to develop the knowledge base in the same way that it used to be. The knowledge is available to us, it's at our fingertips, it's everywhere. But what we need to be able to do is find that knowledge, use that knowledge, problem solve with it, and be innovative with it. One of the ways that we incorporate higher order thinking skills into our courses is by um, developing activities that are authentic, that are based in real world contexts and have real world contacts. So um, you might have a PR course where you go out and you find a nonprofit organization that needs to run a campaign and you're going to develop that campaign for them. So you're going to do their needs analysis, you're going to do uh, mock-ups, you're going to do an actual brochure or whatever it might be. So you're working with a client, you're working to produce the kinds of products that you need to do, so you have to apply what you're learning in class to something real. And um, we often require or request or suggest that you add in as an instructor reflective elements to the class so that if they're working on these sorts of projects maybe they're keeping a journal where they're noticing different things about what they're learning, how what they're learning is connecting to what they're doing in the field and things that challenge them to think hard and deep about why things are important, why they matter, how they connect together. Another is a criminal justice instructor who wanted to teach this mapping software for predicting where criminal activity might occur and what resources should be distributed where. So that one, we were able to create um, cases to go look at and kind of try to predict which communities would need which services and so on and so forth. In terms of team-based learning, there are activities called 4S activities where you structure them in such a way that it makes the students make a decision. So they have to use the content information and their understanding of it at this point in time to make a decision about a scenario or a situation or um, recommendation for another instructor or something like that. And in the process of doing that ranking and that decision making, they have to dig deeply and think deeply and debate and challenge each other's understandings of what the content really means. In a couple of the courses I teach, um, there are a lot of things they need to think about for themselves or think about design. So the professional development course I teach, they have to reflect on big goals like bucket life goals. What do they want to do with their degree? Where do they see this going? And also, how do they want to develop professionally? So a lot of that is internalizing. Um, so journal reflections have been really important because they can process that. It's free form thinking and writing. And that free writing isn't always judged by um, something that's um, grammar intensive or something that you would in an English literature or some other writing course, um, a writing heavy course, but I think it's a nice way that they can process, identify and feel like it's in a safe space and it's comfortable and it'll be read and shared with instructor or a TA that they've built a report with. Um, in my other class that I do at design and development and facilitation online, there's a lot of complicated things to think about and so a lot of them are processing what's cognitive thinking or systems thinking or what would be uh, the best kind of framework or model and they aren't really sure and it's new and a lot of my students that come in from whether it's a college of business or college information or learning design area some aren't used to thinking creatively and I, it's a space where they can share like I'm not comfortable with this and they've said this is something out of my box but I want to try it with my own staff that I work with or I'm thinking about using the student group um, and it's something that I think a discussion forum would limit them because it's a more public in the sense that it's a part of the course that they're sharing with their peers and if they're not comfortable or there's a lot of folks in the class, which I do have a lot of students in some courses, I think it just gets lost in a discussion and I don't know what it would serve value of in another interactive way that a one-to-one -one dialogue with an instructor or part of my instructional team has been really helpful for them to say, hey, I can get feedback and when they write the reflections, they know that there'll be a response from one of us and we'll kind of dig into like a question or something we're working through in that. And this year I've thought about journal reflections. I've had a couple of required ones, but I have them as optional this year um, just because some people, I want things to be relevant and depending on them, I'm letting them kind of self-pace. So I've given more optional reflections. Um, I give a basic word count, like I want them to write a little bit and I let them know it's free form. But some of the topics 
a lot of them are not into um, self-assessment for the workforce because they know their career path and industry they might transition but others are like oh, I'm into that I'm just starting out so the questions I have them reflect on might be um, things they're thinking about from a project to follow up so one of their projects is a um, a bigger personal reflection paper and they're trying to process like the draft or the thinking notes or the points and kind of getting that out and that's kind of like their draft format. Some are like, I'm ready to write this paper, I'm ready. So um, I don't want to make it imposed if they uh, don't want to, but an optional, you know, here's a couple bonus points. It's not worth much, but them, to them, uh, some of them actually just need to write and talk about things. I've done a couple of video reflections. So I've done it in two different formats, so it depends on what it is. So I have them do a couple of video reflex, audio reflex, or written reflex, so it depends. I give probably a little bit more for video because there's a technical component. Um, and some of them um, have showcased and done some creative things, so there's some options to be a little creative. And they know it's a presentation, so whether they're going to do like an elevator pitch that talks about a, their self and bring it together in a short speech, or an Ignite talk, so a five minute talk, 20 slides give me something relevant that you're going to think about in starting a job or onboarding somewhere. And I, I've given them probably maybe 15 to 20 points and they're like, yes, this is great. And they want the points and I think that's the initial carrot. But at the end, they said, actually, this short presentation re made me realize I need to sell this idea to my parents, to my boss, to my coworker, and I can do something really quick and succinct. So I thought that was really neat to hear that outcome from them. Some of the pitfalls that faculty run into when they try to incorporate critical thinking or service learning or application activities into their classes are situations where they think they're requiring critical thinking but they really haven't. You know, the, they might have them comparing and contrasting but it may not be deep enough for them to really have to take what they've learned and know it well enough to be able to put it into their own words, put it into their own thinking and connect it and relate it to other information and then be able to utilize it in a novel situation. And sometimes what's needed there is some scaffolding along the way so that the task for the student isn't too simple where it's really not getting them into critical thinking or isn't so far advanced that they weren't scaffolded up to what they need to do. So sometimes we need to break things into steps or chunks and um, have students move along over the course of the semester. So if it's a, a large final project, for example, we may have them complete part of it, get some feedback, do some tweaking, then the next part, more feedback and tweaking. The more we can give them the formative feedback and structure along the way, the more likely we are to have a successful outcome and help them reach higher levels of thinking by the end of the semester. Make sure that students are actively working and engaging and that's the tricky part for people to sometimes understand because what sometimes gets interpreted as active is means they're just doing something. So by filling in a worksheet is it's activity they have to write but it's not active cognitive processes necessarily. So what we're looking for is active cognitive processes. So you're looking for things where there aren't just straightforward right and wrong answers, um, where there's more of uh, multiple perspectives that need to be looked at, um, where you might be looking to see how one thing stacks up against another, or how different approaches to something might be equally valid and equally invalid, but it's a complex situation. So in a complex situation, you're going to have those kind of pros and cons, and they're going to interact. Nothing is black and white. So I think the more that you can draw those kinds of debates and conversations and have it connect back to your content, actively making, um, making those connections and scaffolding those connections for the students so that they take something that you want them to learn and they connect it to what you're asking them to do in a very real way. So they're not... Um, working completely off their experience or completely off of um, opinion. They're working with experience, opinion, each other's ideas, and what you have in the content. Or making them work through, if you were Dr. So-and-so who wrote this article, how would you argue X? You have to put yourself into a whole other mindset to be able to think it through.